Hey everybody, Tim Harridge here. So I've been wanting to get more active on my YouTube channel. It kind of, I'd say, last 30 days or so, I've been thinking about a lot about it. So I'm gonna start uploading a video kind of every day, um, just tackling different real estate investing uh, topics. So today, I'll talk about the importance of cash flow. I was talking to my wife today. And, you know, the more debt you take on, the more properties you take on, uh, sometimes the, the less it feels like you make. Um, and if you don't have the right cash flowing assets and you're not paying attention to your debt structure, it's just one of those things that can sneak up on you. So for instance, right now, our monthly cash flow on our properties has changed a lot because there have been so many property tax increases in the last couple of years that even though we have fixed debt mortgages, even though our, you know, our rents are going up, the taxes and the insurance are going up at a higher rate. So part of the conversation is not only how do you maximize revenue, but how do you minimize expenses, right? So a couple things in Texas, you can protest your property taxes. And I'll admit, I didn't do it in 2021. Um, just completely forgot, uh, was busy, was kind of, <laughs> Uh, a lot of backyard barbecuing, not a whole lot of real estate. And it bit me, it bit me pretty hard. So uh, when we protested in 22 and now in 23, we've hired a protest firm so that we're gonna actually do our best to uh, get some of these values down. But as of right now, just on, I'll talk about my Rockwall properties, just those properties alone, you're looking at a reduction in monthly cash flow of about $3,500. So, and that's just in the property taxes. What we're seeing across the board on insurance is 20, 25% increase in insurance rates. So when you really look at all of those factors, I, you have to push rents, right? You have to increase revenue. But another thing is you can have other cash flowing assets, right? So owner finance notes are a great way to create cash flow. They're a great way to have kind of that, uh, you know, when the property taxes goes up, go up, that goes up on the owner, not on the note holder, right? So if you're holding those owner finance notes, when the property taxes and insurance go up, it actually doesn't impact your cash flow, your income stream. Now you don't get the appreciation either. So, and, the, and there's a trade-off, right? But when you're looking at rental properties, you, you've got to make sure that when you do the value add, that you're able to actually get the, get the enough rent in order to pay what your property tax bill is going to be once you make it the nicest house in the neighborhood. Um, or you have to have a plan to recycle that equity, right? So if I, short math, right? If I put down $25,000 on a house and I own it for two or three years and cash flow a couple hundred bucks a month, that's not great. But if I now have $100,000 in equity and I can capture that equity via a refinance or a sale or an owner finance sale, well now, I've multiplied my equity enough that I can go into a bigger asset. Maybe I can put $100,000 down on a small multifamily building, uh, or maybe I can invest in someone else's syndication. So I think you've got to look at your cash flow. You have to understand there's a lot of components of it. It's interest rate, it's taxes, it's insurance, it, it's the rent. It, it all adds up. And um, just monitor your cash flow. Make sure that you're not upside down. I mean, if you took a 1.1 DSCR loan a couple of years ago, you know, you could actually <laughs> be getting close to being negative. So that's it. Hope this is helpful. Hit me up and let me know what you think. And if you've got any topics you want me to cover.